Hi guys, welcome to this module on Microsoft PowerPoint. In this module, we're going to look how to use sections. We're going to look at how to export into Word to create handouts, how to package a presentation for CD so you can move it onto different computers, and how to create a video. But first of all, sections. Now on the Home tab, you have the option to create or add a section. So I'm going to just click on a couple of slides um, to highlight a few slides first. You don't need to do that, but you would have to add them later on. But if I now call this British, for example, and then rename that, I have all these slides as British. I've got a default section for the title, so I'll just call that general, rename that, and then I need to create one for French, so I'll just um, click on a French slide first off, so we find a French slide, so further down, there she blows, and click on a few slides, and add section, French, rename, so I've got three slides in the French section, and I've got all these under the British section, and then general. And if you need to move things around from one to another, you can just drag them into different sections. So push that down into French, like so. And then you can collapse these down just to look at the summary, like so. And then you can also, which is really cool, place individual design themes by section. So that's four slides in the British Forces. If I just expand those, they've got a blue background. If I go into the French section, they're still white. Now, if I'd have, if I'd have done that before, all of, without sections, all of these would have changed to be blue. So I'll just change this to black just to show you that. So there you go. So creating sections helps you manage your presentation, but also helps you use multiple designs. The other way to do all that, of course, is, is something I showed on an earlier presentation where you can create different slide masters and have different color themes on those. So that's sections. Now, the other thing I want to mention in this little module is sending things into Word to create handouts. Now, basically you click on this option and create handouts. Before I do that though, let's just have a look at the options you've got in PowerPoint. If we go back to print, you've got these options where you can select different styles. Quite often people like this one, but the downside to this is that you get the notes that are on each slide appearing to the right and you can't actually type on those. You can write on those if you're doing notes, of course. But if I send this into Word, what it creates in Word is a Word table. If I just click on that, let's see if it, let's see if it goes. It creates a Word table, which you can link. So if these slides change, the changes will be shown in Word. Now, I'm going to pick the same option, notes next to slides, click OK to that. And then it should open Word and start populating the slides. And you can see if I click into Word, you can see it creates a table in Word and just drops in the notes if there are any notes on the right hand side. Now the benefit I think of this is that you can you can type, you could email this to people and type different um, notes as required. If you've got it linked like I do, you can change things on this slide and that will affect the Word document. So at the moment it's having a bit of a epic trying to do that, there we go. It sometimes does take a little while for it to populate, but there you go, that, that is the PowerPoint in Word and you can see there that I have notes already, but that's not, that wouldn't stop me adding additional notes on these, next to these slides if I required. Now, if I go to a slide that hasn't got much information on it and just like, walk through the title slide. So let's have a look at that for a second. If I go back into the presentation, 
going to walk through the title slide and let's just type some text, some random text next to the date and go back into the word. Can't actually see that there, so I'm just going to press F9 and if I zoom that in a little bit, you should see that that actually updated and you can see that, that text that I've typed there. I've only done F9 because I've not saved this document. If I if I had have saved this document and then reopened it, it would automatically update. Um, having asked me first of all if I wanted to update links, but it's a great little feature if you if you send in that to students or it's in the shared drive somewhere, people can access that. They've got the most up to date slides package. So let's just close Word down. Don't save it. Back into Waterloo. Let's have a quick look at package for CD. So. One of the big issues you have with PowerPoint is if you've got embedded documents like Excel spreadsheets or video, when you do file save as, those, those documents don't come across with the file save. You have to embed them in this package, package for CD, which is a bit a strange name because really you can save it as a folder. So I'll just create this and you can see how it works. So package for CD, it gives you the option of copy to folder so I'll just call this Steve and copy to folder as opposed to a CD. Folder name is going to be Steve. It's on, I don't want it in documents. I'll put it on my desktop so you can see it on the desktop. Um, yeah, okay, that'll do. Open folder when complete. Yeah, okay, and then it's telling me that all linked files, if there are any, will be copied. So I'll have a copy of it. And do I want to include it, basically? Yes, I do. I don't think there are any linked files, but let's just go. And what this would mean is that you would better run this PowerPoint presentation on any machine, even if it didn't have PowerPoint, because it has the, the ability to open also, if you've done this in a, a new version of PowerPoint and you're opening it on a computer with an old version of PowerPoint, you'll still have the ability to, to show the new features. Um, I have been caught out many, many times by not doing this, by just saving PowerPoint presentations to a stick and then pushing it to another computer and then finding when I get there, half the things are not there. So you'll only do it a few times and then you'll remember to use this feature. So I'll just cancel that off for now quite easy enough to do. In the old days, you used to have to put loads and loads of floppy disks in, showing my age there, but that was a really, really laborious process. Now, the last thing in this session I want to have a quick look at is creating a video based on your presentation. So you've got these options there. It says five seconds as a default on each slide. Now, I might stop this halfway through because this is quite a long process, but all you need to do is click on create video. And again, I'm going to put this onto my desktop so you, I can get rid of it. It's going to create an MP4 there, save. And then it will now create a video based on these slides, five seconds per slide. And when it's finished, you can see it going down the bottom there. It will be just exactly the same as any other mp4 file you'll just be able to double click and it will automatically open and then run the presentation at five second gaps just wait a couple of seconds to see if it speeds up maybe i should have changed it down to one second but all of these features are available and sometimes when you've got a process that you want to explain to people, you can create a little video of it, so maybe not so many, as many slides as this, but say two or three slides or even one slide with animation on it, set to go on a loop, create a video, and then you can embed that video in the slide master. So for example, you could have a, a video running in the corner on every slide showing a process. So if you're trying to explain something or you're trying to drum something into a class or something, you could have the process there because it's step one, step two, step three, so on and so on. And every time you go into a new slide, it will say step one, step two, step three. So you, you're subliminally giving them information by having it running around in the loop in the slide master. 
I've done that quite a few times in the past. Sometimes you do have to play around with it a little bit to get it to work. So that looks like it's done. So if I just go down onto my desktop, where is it? There is it there? Yes, it is. There it is. So if I open that, it should start playing. I'll show me the video five seconds per slide. And there you can see there's the MP4 video playing away. I'll just close that, come back into PowerPoint. So that's the end of this session. I hope you enjoyed that and I'll see you on the next one.